Religious history was made in Abu Dhabi last year when the document on human fraternity was signed by Pope Francis and Dr. Ahmed El Tayeb, the Grand Imam of Al Azhar. It called for tolerance, universal peace, and the reconciliation of all faiths. Embodying this agreement, this year construction will start on a project called the Abrahamic Family House on Sadiat Island. Due for completion in 2022, the site will house a church, a mosque, and a synagogue. Between the 3rd and the 5th of February 2019, Pope Francis became the first Pope in the history of Catholic Church to visit the Arabian Peninsula. When he went to the UAE and he visited with the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Professor Dr. Ahmed Al-Tayeb. That was 2019. And when that visit took place, there was something that happened. They signed a document that was called the Document of Human Fraternity for World Peace. So basically, it was Pope Francis trying to court the Muslims into his one world religion agenda. Because when he was done with that visit, he also went to see the Buddhists, he went to see the Hindus, he went to visit different leaders of other religions. He has been on a mission to unite the religions of the world and all these have been in the news. It's not even something you have to go to do any research to find out. They've been reported widely in the news. And so this leg of his trip was the one that took him to Abu Dhabi. It became a historic trip because no other Pope of the Catholic Church had been there. Now, to show you that the document of human fraternity for world peace, which they signed, keep in mind the word world peace. So when they say human fraternity for world peace, and it also has something to do with uniting of the religions. It's simply telling you that whatever they are doing, they are doing it in the name of peace. Now, don't forget that when we talked about the Antichrist, remember the videos I've done for you. I've told you that the Antichrist is a man of peace. He's going to come into this world with the mantra of peace. He will come with fake peace. Everything he's going to come and promote in this world, the moment he shows up, is going to be peace. People will call him a man of peace. And the Bible says that they will, why they are shouting peace, 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 sudden destruction will come. So it's not surprising that what we see here is called the document of human fraternity for world peace. For world peace. Now let me read you the document that I stumbled on to show you what has happened a follow-up to this visit. So here it says, the caption, first of all, is very interesting. It said, One World Religion Headquarters to open in 2022. That soon. Okay. So we go down here. It says, The announcement of the Abrahamic family house on the Sadiat Island in Abu Dhabi follows a visit by Pope Francis to the UAE in February of 2019. The first by a Pope to the Arabian Peninsula. During the trip, the Pope signed a joint declaration with the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Dr. Ahmed El Tayeb, that called for religious tolerance and dialogue, an interfaith council to oversee projects advancing tolerance was formed as a result of that declaration that they signed. And that interfaith council that would oversee projects advancing tolerance was named the Higher Committee of Human Fraternity. The Abrahamic Family House is its first initiative. So that interfaith committee that was formed to oversee projects that would advance tolerance, religious tolerance, has now set up a project and their first initiative is the building that you see on the screen right now in this video. The Abrahamic family 
is supposed to house actually is housing not supposed because it's actually going to be open to the public as early as 2022 which is just next year so it's housing a mosque a synagogue and a church and this is in abu dhabi the same place where proselytizing is a problem because if you proselytize in abu dhabi you can actually get punished for that proselytizing is a terrible crime in the whole of uae i'm going to read you something that will shock you about this place that's coming up though usually not enforced teaching that jesus is the only god is considered to be an act of insulting allah or the prophet muhammad and offenders can be subject to imprisonment for five or more years Find from 250,000 dirhams, which is $68,100, to 2 million dirhams, which is about 545,000 US dollars. And Christians may be deported for speaking and saying that Jesus is the only God. Remember, Pope Francis himself, and I, I put this in one of my videos, Pope Francis himself had also advised Christians to stop proselytizing. In other words, they should stop trying to convert people of other religions to their own religion. Meaning that Pope Francis believes that all religions actually point to God. We all worship the same God. So quit trying to convert anybody. Quit evangelizing and look what is going on here in the UAE. If you preach and say that Christ is the only Lord and Savior, which is what is written in the Bible, you get punished for that. The same UAE where these whole three structures are erected now and will be open to the public in 2022. So this is what the whole agenda is all about. I've always said it to us that the whole aim of one world religion is not really for peace like they always tell you because I, you know that the peace they talk about is always going to be a fake peace. It's not about peace. It's about technically obliterating and eliminating the whole essence of your Christian faith and Christian belief. It's about destroying the foundations of our Christian faith, of Christianity, and I mean true Christianity, not the fake ones. That's what the whole one more religion thing is all about. It's about relegating true Christianity to the background. That's what this is all about. That's why they tell you, no, 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 no. You cannot preach that. And where did this whole journey start from? In one of the videos, if you go down, I exposed this many years ago. I think about two or three years ago. I talked about how this journey began of trying to come into some type of alliance or interface tolerance thing with Muslims. The thing, the document that started this whole conversation of uniting with Muslims or forming a common body with Muslims is called a common word. In other words, a common word between us and you. And in that common word document, Muslims requested that for them to come into a partnership and become one with the Christians, the Christians have to give up the whole idea of saying that Christ is the only Lord and Savior. They need to quit saying that Jesus Christ or Yeshua is the son of the Most High God. They say God did not have a wife. He cannot have a son. So these were the conditions they gave. And guess what? The Christian representatives who were there at that point of signing this document actually went ahead and signed the document in the name of peace. So there was an alliance created even before Pope Francis became the Pope of the Catholic Church. This alliance was formed already. So what he came to do was now to take it to the next level. That's why he became the first Pope of the Catholic Church to visit Abu Dhabi. And when he made that visit, I showed you this in many of my videos as well. Not just one video, about two or three videos. Remember that to show his commitment, Al-Tayyab went ahead and named a mosque after 
Mary, the mother of Christ. This happened after Pope made that visit in 2019. It was very well publicized in the media. So I'm going to read you a few more things and I can just round this up because this is not meant to be very long. There is something here because this Abrahamic family house that is going to be open to the public from 2022, which is already built in Abu Dhabi, which shows that the moment Pope visited them in 2019 and they signed that agreement and the mosque was named after Mary, the mother of Christ, that the construction work that we are about to witness open to the public in 2022 actually began immediately. So they didn't want to waste any time. They've always had this incredible sense of urgency. Unlike many of us Christians, who should actually have more sense of urgency than them. But they know there's no time. Can you imagine 2019 and the structures are already up and will be open to the public in 2022? So to show you that these guys are not wasting any time, the same exact thing you see coming that has happened in Abu Dhabi is taking place in Berlin, Germany. And they call that one the House of One. Here is the caption here. Christians, Muslims and Jews to share faith center in Berlin. Here in the center of Berlin, a hybrid church mosque synagogue is underway. Located on the site of a demolished 13th century church, House of One is an attempt at building interface bridges by letting people of three religions worship under one roof. Wenn Sie einen Rabbiner, einen Pfarrer und Imam unter einem Dach sehen wollen, in einem Gebäude, wo eine Synagoge, eine Kirche und Moschee auch sind und in der Mitte ein Saal, wo die verschiedenen Strömungen sich treffen können, der House of One in Berlin. Es wird ein Bet- und Lehrhaus sein, in dem drei Religionen wohnen. Für uns Muslime ist es eine wunderbare Möglichkeit, in unserer Heimat, in Deutschland, wahr und ernst genommen zu werden. Es ist nicht nur One für Berlin sondern von hier, gerade weil es eine multikulturelle Stadt ist, wird sich das verbreiten in verschiedenen Ländern der Welt. Und wunderbar ist auch, unsere Freunde und Nachbarn besser verstehen und schätzen zu lernen. Im Haus auf Wann werden Gerechtigkeit, Frieden und Versöhnung zu Hause sein. Genau diese Gedanken haben wir in den Architekturwettbewerb einfließen lassen. Sie sollen den Geist des Hauses prägen. Wollen Sie nicht mitmachen, um dieses Zentrum aufzubauen? This is House of One. What is it called? It's called the House of One. So let's read a few things about this House of One so you can see the similarities. It's not even similarity. They are just the same thing. Now it says, The foundation stone of the House of One in Berlin will be laid at a ceremony on 27 May, done already. Marking the end of 10 years of planning and the beginning of an estimated four years of construction and symbolizing a new venture in interfaith cooperation and dialogue. The 47 million euro building designed by Berlin architects Kohn and Marvesi will incorporate a church, a mosque, and a synagogue linked to a central meeting space. People of other faiths and denominations and those of no faith at all will be invited to events and discussions in the large hall. So basically, they are telling you here that the building is going to be a mosque, a church, and a synagogue, the three of the leading religions in the world. But then there's going to be a central meeting area, a central meeting space. So it's almost like building a three-bedroom bungalow, right? And uh, this room is mosque. That room is a church. And this other room is a synagogue. And they all have a door that leads to the living room. And they share the same common living room. Now he's telling you that in that living room, people of all the other religions can be invited to events there. And people who don't even have any faith at all, any religion at all, can actually be invited to that place. So the interfaith dialogue and tolerance that these people are pushing is so diabolic that no matter what you worship, even if you don't worship anything, 
You are meant to be accepted. You are meant to be tolerated. You are meant to be seen as a person who is worshipping the same God that brother A or sister C is worshipping. So I'm worshipping the most high God through Yeshua and these guys who don't have any faith at all. A person who is an atheist doesn't believe in anything. Somebody who is a witch, somebody who worships the devil openly, doesn't even hide it. A Satanist, a Satan worshipper will come to the same place and I cannot tell him that, look, you are a Satan worshipper. I cannot share the same place with you except if I'm going to preach to that person. This is exactly what is going on. That's why Pope Francis said you should stop proselytizing. Stop preaching to anybody who does not believe the way you believe because he believes that we all believe the same way. How is this possible? These guys are just making it look like we are all stupid. Like even if you didn't read anything, even if you don't know anything, how can somebody tell me that the person who is worshipping whatever they worship is worshipping the same God as me? I've always said this to people. I said, listen, when people tell me, are you saying that this person who's worshipping here is not going to go to heaven? The way I always say it to them is simple. Every religion has a prophet or maybe some type of messianic figure in that religion. And people always follow them. They believe they will go to God through them. Now, what I always say to people is this. That prophet you believe in, whatever heaven he is, wherever he is, that's where you will go. You don't have to force yourself to come to the heaven where Christ, my Christ is. Me, I'm going to the heaven where Christ is. You will go to the heaven where your own prophet is or your own master is. Is that not fair enough? I'm just trying to be fair. It's simple. But what they are doing now, they don't even want to give me the opportunity of telling people about my Christ, of telling people about Yeshua, of telling people what the Bible says about the devil or about witchcraft. Very soon watch it. You are going to be turned or called a terrorist for calling a witch a witch or for calling a Satanist a Satanist. Mark my words today. That's what this whole interfaith dialogue and, and tolerance nonsense is all about. And they are no longer talking about it. They are already putting structures in place. And all these structures they are putting in place are going to be backed up by government policies. My goodness, we are so close to the end of all things as we know it. Imagine when they start labeling all of us terrorists because we don't believe the way they believe. Guess what is going to happen? We will go back to what the church used to be back in the days when the Roman Empire was killing and persecuting the body of Christ like there's no tomorrow. Christians were running on the ground into the catacombs to go and hope for this. That's the same thing coming. I'm saying it today. It doesn't look feasible. It doesn't make sense to you. But this is exactly where this is all leading. Except if you are all going to Kotor and just join them and continue to believe with them. When they started building a communical center in Nigeria, I told you. I said it. They were building all these places. All those ecumenical centers are going to start hosting or housing all the religions. Take my word for it. I'm telling you what will happen. That's my job here to make you know what is about to happen. What you do with it then is up to you entirely. We now hear that apart from Berlin, that these structures are also going up. They're going to go up in Central African Republic and about five or six other African countries. And of course, you know that the big cathedral that will house people of other religions have been going up in different parts of Africa. I hear of Ghana, uh, of course, Nigeria in different states, actually. That's a communical center. I told you about that. That one is to bring all the people that say they belong to Christianity. Everybody come under one roof. They want to unite those ones first of all. And then every other religion will then come. All these things are done and dusted. United Nations is behind, supporting fully. Vatican is at the forefront. So there is nothing stopping them. That's why you see all this happening right now. Look at the structures going up. There's a write-up here that I want us to read as we close. It says, in December 2020, the United Nations passed an anti-blasphemy law that most Christians are not aware of. The loosely translated law as embraced by the UAE prohibits any teachings against Islam, including biblical teachings which could be considered offensive. What did I just tell you right now? 
When you say that Jesus or Yeshua is the only son of God, the only begotten son of God, that is a preaching against Islam. When you say that he is the only God, that's a preaching against Islam and other religions. So you can see you are already technically a terrorist because you don't want world peace. You know that this thing they are doing is for the sake of world peace. Interfaith dialogue and tolerance is all about world peace. And when you refuse to go in the line of their thoughts and that ideology, you are simply an anti-peace element and you need to be dealt with just like any other terrorist, like ISIS or any terrorist around the world. This is exactly where we are headed. And that's why I say that I needed to get this out, so you see. So for me, it's not just about, oh, look, they are building it. No, I'm not surprised for crying out loud. If anybody is surprised, it's not me. I've been following one word religion almost from its inception. The last video I did about the beast that came up at the United Nations headquarters, I also showed you when they laid the altar. It was laid by the Hamashal. When they laid the altar, and from the moment the altar was laid, all the agents of darkness that will make it happen began to show up into our world. It is as clear as can be. The believers in our Lord need to start having this incredible sense of urgency so that we are not caught napping on the day of the Lord. The Bible says it will come like a thief in the night. Wake up, people. Wake up, make amends with God, man. Make amends. You see how people are dying left, right, and center. Your beauty will not count when the time comes. Your fame will not count when the time comes. Your wealth will be nothing when the time comes. I've seen people who launched their latest Rolls Royce, probably the second or third one, and less than a week after they're dead, and families are fighting over the wealth. All these things will live for has no meaning if you don't know where you end up when you die. Brother, sister, I'm begging you if you still haven't made up your mind. Turn to God in truth and in spirit. A minute because only he can save us from the hands of these bloodthirsty demons. And may his grace abound towards you, your family, and towards all of us, now and forever.